All right, I'm live. Exciting times. Hey guys, I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, portfolio manager here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and I'm the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group. Thanks for joining me today. Pretty excited about the show today. We got a crazy day in the markets today. I will talk about that. Uh, more importantly, I am also chatting with a health expert. Really, really thrilled to have her on the show. Uh, but before I introduce her, let's take a quick sec to look at our wonderful disclaimer. All right. That basically says, do not take this as investment advice. If you're a client, great. Uh, but if not, you know, regardless, you need to talk to your advisor before making any decisions. Certainly don't make decisions based on this show. All right. My guest, I want to introduce her right now. Uh, I'll give her the bio after, but for now, uh, Tanya Teto, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, your proverbial hands together for my sister, Tanya Teto. Tanya, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. Yes, where are you there? That'd be at your house, I would imagine. I am at my house. I'm trying to set an example, stay home, stay safe. So this is my uh, my little office at home. Nice. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in on the show. Um, really, really thankful to have you here. I'll give you guys an introduction to my sister for those of you who don't know her. Uh, she uh, was born way, way before me. Uh, she's way, way older than me. Uh, she's a successful entrepreneur, a CEO of uh, CrossFit Winnipeg and North Star Fitness. Uh, she also is a uh, prolific writer. She writes uh, regularly for multiple different uh, media outlets. She used to write a ton for The Lance and uh, she's had different, she's got a, a very successful blog. Uh, she also was regularly on featured on TV as well as a contributor, I think for like Breakfast TV, I want to say, or is that right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, she uh, she owns and operates uh, the, the oldest CrossFit license in Manitoba. She's had that going now for, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. Tanya, is that accurate? Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think it's 11 years now. Yeah. 11 years. Okay. Yeah. So 11 years in the fitness industry. Uh, and now I think more than ever, the reason that I thought would make a ton of sense to bring you on here is health. I mean, we're all at home. We're stuck at home. There's a whole bunch of different aspects to that, to health. Um, but I really thought that it'd be valuable to bring you on just to share kind of what you're doing with guys like me, what you're doing with your clients, how you're helping them uh, stay healthy in this very, very difficult time. Because I think it's, you know, it's the first question that people always ask these days is how, you know, how are you doing? And it's not a, hey, how are you doing? It's a legit question because right now, you know, emotions and everything that's going on. So maybe, um, maybe you want to just tell me a little bit, uh, do you follow the markets at all? First question I want to ask you. Well, see, I actually don't, and it's kind of embarrassing to say it, but the reason I don't is because I have someone that I trust to look after my portfolio. So I actually <laughs> don't really follow it very much, but my husband does. He said, uh, he told me something, uh, he said that like today was a historical day, that there is the, like the oil prices are going crazy or something like that. Um, so I don't know the whole story about that, but. Oh my uh, goodness. Tanya, this is crazy. This, I, I have to share this. This is so crazy. So a, a price for a barrel of oil, one barrel of oil for usually trades on futures contracts. So, you know, they accept delivery for this barrel of oil at a future date. These barrels were trading at 20 to 25 bucks. This is kind of the all time ish low prices for these barrels. Now the May future contracts are for accepted delivery for tomorrow. This morning I had a chat with my dad and he goes, yeah, there's nowhere to put this oil. Like I wonder what's going to happen. So if you buy a barrel of oil today, you have to accept delivery for it tomorrow. That means you have to store it somewhere like, uh, you know, in a, in a tankard somewhere or like, but, so you have to store it somewhere. And lo and behold, he's like, I don't know where people are going to store this oil. There's nowhere to store it. Like no one's using oil. Right. So we have all this supply, no demand. You got to store this oil somewhere. Tomorrow is the day for delivery. So guess what happened to the price of oil? It collapsed today. And I don't mean collapse like down 10% or 20% Tanya minus $57 today for the price, the one day movement for the price of oil. It went from 20 bucks to minus $37, minus 37 even, bucks. How is that even possible? What does that actually mean for people who have these now? So if, if you, if you bought a con, if you bought a contract for delivery of oil tomorrow, you got $37, you were given money and you're going to be receiving a barrel of oil tomorrow. So you get, you get 37 bucks and you got the barrel of oil or put in a better way. You have to pay people to get rid of all your, of your oil right now. And we're not talking a dollar or two. You have to pay $37 to get rid 
of a barrel of oil today. I cannot believe I am saying that. How do it's, I get rich on this, Rob? <laughs> well, you, you, you can't. <laughs> uh, we don't. We choose not to uh, speculate. So this is purely speculation. Now, I think your question is probably like, you know, am I impacted or, or are we impacted? The the short answer is most Canadians are not impacted by this because tomorrow. The, the barrel of oil is going to trade at 20 bucks or 18 bucks or 16 bucks or 15, which is going to be similar to what it was prior to this. So most Canadians are not going to be impacted by this. Now, if you'll work directly in the oil field services, you're probably laid off or will be laid off in the future, I would imagine. But for you and me and anyone who owns kind of a balanced portfolio of stocks, you're fine. This is not going to impact you directly. The people that got wiped out today are the people that are speculators and are gambling and are, are trading on futures markets. It's going to be carnage, Tanya. It's going to be, I can't imagine the damage it's going to cause to the speculation industry. But anyways, uh, not seriously impacted if this is you. I mean, if you own oil stocks, you know, they, they were down a little bit today, but, you know, certainly not 300% like a barrel of oil was down for crazy, crazy, crazy. So it's you're not so following crazy. the market. I know. Tanya, <laughs> I, I, I wish I would have planned this today because then I could, like, <laughs> we could have talked the whole show about a barrel of oil. But um, I will be chatting about this with Claude, uh, my father, on, uh, on Thursday. We'll be dissecting this a little bit more because like the record drop before today, Tanya, was 30%. And now today we saw 300%. It's so, interesting like, times we live in. I think everyone, no matter what industry you're in right now, you are just in a situation where there's there's no playbook. You can't just, like I was telling you earlier, I just, I can't Google, what do I do when my gym is shut down and I have to pay the rent? <laughs> you know, like no one yeah. knows what to do. Just like you can't Google what happens when the price of oil goes negative. <laughs> It's crazy. What what did you get? When so you guys are closed down at at the actual physical building, yeah, right. And that's been several weeks, a month. Yeah, that's uh, since mid March. So we closed down actually before the mandatory shutdown in mid March. Uh, we we had a lot of people congregating in our building, and we felt uh, some responsibility to perhaps set the example and uh, try to do our part at least to try to settle things down a little bit. Um, and for us, you know, what I like to say is that the gym is, the physical facility is shut down, but our business is not. Um, we're very lucky to have a business that can utilize technology. So it's really good. And I imagine you had to adapt for that. You you were training people remotely before, but like certainly now this is this is your business. You're training people remotely now. Yeah. So I had uh, experience doing this a long time ago. And, um, and so this is for me actually something that I'm really, really passionate about. You know, you were saying earlier, everyone's asking like, how are you doing? And, and people are generally concerned for us. I actually feel like I'm kind of thriving right now because I get to go back to something that I'm super, super passionate about, which is coaching individuals, not just for their workouts, but for their nutrition, for their mental health. And uh, we live in wonderful times where we, we have the technology to do this. So if people ask me, how am I doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> and in 1918, you wouldn't have been able to train people remotely. We didn't have that. So now you have that opportunity. So I, I'm good. I, I like hearing that you're doing great. I'm also doing great. So it's, uh, it, we did, we definitely did have to adapt. So tell me about, um, tell me about the, the, the type of service that you're actually offering right now. Like if I want, if I'm sitting at home right now and I want to, I want to work with Tanya, how does that work? That's a great question because I think everyone kind of has this vague idea of what online training is. We actually call it remote coaching. And uh, the way that we deliver it, I think the most important piece to this right now is just communication, right? There has to be some back and forth so that uh, you don't feel alone in this whole process. So we have an awesome app that we use that allows us to keep in daily communication with all of our clients. We get to send them little videos of all the exercises that we are prescribing for them. And then we also get to have daily conversations with them about what their nutrition should look like, uh, what kind of stress management strategies uh, they can look at. Uh, and everything is completely customized. So that's actually my favorite part about it is I actually get to help people reach very specific goals. So fun and, so, and the goals aren't necessarily always like oh i want to lose 40 pounds or whatever right like the goals no. are, are extremely customized and different almost like in my world where you know everyone's got a different goal for their retirement or for whatever it may be and you know there is no cookie cutter approach to building portfolios and there's no cookie cutter approach i would imagine 
to building workout uh, workout regimens or what would you call it to a remote coaching program yeah, exercise program or program delivery and you know you, you hit it right on the nose right it's that you can get general results with the general cookie cutter program um but you can get much better results with a customized program to the goals and yeah the goals can be all kinds of goals so right now i'm working with you know uh, someone who wants to lose body fat. I am working with um, someone who just wants to improve their mood. I am working with uh, someone who has um, food intolerances and they're working on that. I'm working with someone who wants to get a handstand uh, and so I'm helping them with that. I'm working with someone who's getting back into running after an injury. So there's just so many different goals and so for me I, I almost feel like I'm an artist right now. I get to be creative and to find different ways of helping people reach their goals in ways that they never would have thought of before. I imagine it's rewarding too. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really rewarding. Um, and you know, I kind of, I wish that I could see all my clients in person. Um, but the next best thing is it's really nice to have this app where we can, you know, send each other videos and chat. Uh, it's, it works really, really well. And I think that's another misconception too, is that, like you said, you know, people think that trainers only there to help you lose 10 pounds or whatever. Um, I have, you know, other clients where, you know, what we're doing is basically working on mindfulness or breathing patterns or gratitude, because that's actually what they need right now. Um, and let's think- talk about that. Let's talk about that. That, that. I think that's super important. In fact, a couple months ago, here at Canaccord Genuity in Winnipeg, we started mindfulness and we started, uh, I, I want to call it meditation, but I could be wrong, but mindfulness and meditation. And we started bringing in someone, you know, Wednesdays during the lunch hour and we would all kind of, the office would all go in there and the productivity in the afternoon on Wednesdays was just dramatically better. But I mean, obviously we can't do that now. So I wonder if this has kind of fallen off to the wayside for most people, probably in a time where they really need it, right? Yeah, I, I would say that now more than ever, um, I would say that this is also the biggest thing that has changed in terms of um, in terms of how we coach our clients right now. So there's much more emphasis on mental health and stress management uh, because that seems to be kind of the biggest struggle that everyone has right now. Um, but I think a, a big misconception is that the whole, you know, for example, the mental health and mindfulness that like meditation has to be this like big complicated thing. Um, but it actually doesn't, you know, like for some of my clients, it's as simple as taking, setting a timer on your phone for 60 seconds and breathing and writing down something that you're grateful for, for the day, for example. Wait, wait, but if you don't, how, how could you not breathe for 60 seconds? <laughs> you breathe and you don't do anything else and you don't oh, you look breathe at your you phone. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Now that, that would be kind of, I guess, one of the simplest kind of things of mindfulness, but I imagine there are like, there's a whole spectrum there of mindfulness exercise. And then you do that, like, give us some examples of some other kind of mindfulness stuff that you would recommend to, you know, busy, you know, moms or dads that are at home that are incredibly stressed yeah. and, you know, their life is just surviving right now. Yeah, exactly. And and you're exactly right. Um, that's in the mode that most people are in right now is survival mode, especially parents. Parents are in a very different boat right now than everyone else. You know, I feel bad for them because they're seeing everyone without kids are like, oh, I'm taking an online course and I'm listening to podcasts and I'm cleaning out my basement, you know? And meanwhile, the parents are like, oh, I got to do this homework right now. Well, for us at home, like I think of my wife, Michelle, like she's a school teacher, so she has to prep kind of courses for her students we have four kids she's got a homeschool three of them that are in school and we still have one in diapers and like i just uh, when i think they didn't think this through i think this shut down through and the proper you know th there's just not enough hours in the day to get everything done right yeah but anyways you were talking about mindfulness yeah so getting getting back to kind of how our strategy has changed to include more mindfulness there's a couple of things so the first thing being that um, most people need some wins right now. And I think people are trying to really bite off really big chunks when all they need is a little nibble. <laughs> so as far as workouts are concerned, one way to improve mental health is by doing something that's short and accessible in small chunks. So that's the first thing. And that's not necessarily a mindfulness exercise in itself, but it's a way to create positive vibes and it's a way to create motivation. So one of the things that we see working a lot is that success begets motivation and not the other way around. 
Ah. So that's it, right? Like motivation is a big part of stress management, but it's very hard to motivate yourself if you haven't had a win in a while, right? Yeah. You know, I think of on this show, even when I started this show, however long ago it was, I told my viewers and I'm telling them now, there will always be some parts of good news on this show every single time, because we need to be reminded that as shitty as this is right now, as terrible as, as we all feel, you know, some things are turning around and things will get better. And so a, a part of me, and you know me, Tanya, I'm an incredibly positive person mm -hmm. and you are too. And I think it's, it's that whole mindfulness getting wins. And I, I keep reminding my clients of the, the small wins and, um, you know, whether it's flattening a little bit of the curve or whether it's, you know, maybe a vaccines on the horizon or whatever it may be. Part of, part of that is to continue to deliver that every single day. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we apply that to fitness too, right? So what we do in our coaching is provide bite-sized wins and then build on that momentum and get that to snowball. So another example of things that we might give is we might give us a, a sleep a hygiene prescription because sleep is one of those things that can really help with stress management. Another thing that we might give. Sorry, sorry. So what does that look like a sleep hygiene prescription? <laughs> sleep hygiene. So that might look like, okay, everyone's going to hate me here, but if you do it, you will love me. It, it looks like perhaps uh, turning your phone off an hour before going to bed and not looking at social media. Um, it might. That's a big one. That's a huge one, right? Yeah. So that can be a big one. But then as a coach, my job is to give you something that you can look forward to that will replace that. So these are the kinds of things that we do with our clients where we say, hey, you know what, like, what, what would you really look forward to after you put the kids to bed? Would you look forward to a bath? Would you look forward to curling up with a good book? All right, well, let's do that instead. So these are all some strategies that we use for stress management and that, um, you know, not having a look at the social media is really great for getting better sleep. But the other thing is the phone screens have um, blue light. It's artificial light, right. which uh, reduces your ability to fall asleep fast. So that one simple thing can make a huge difference in someone's life. So just one example of one of the little things that we might do to help people out. Okay. I want to ask you concretely about, or specifically about, like the actual stuff that you can do in your basement. So I know, okay, I can go out and I can jog, you know, I can go and I can run around St. B. I can do that. Um, but let's say I'm a viewer right now and I'm watching you and I'm like, Tanya, what can I possibly do in my basement or in my house? Maybe I'm in a condo. Maybe I have a smaller place. How, what do I do to stay fit? How would you custom create someone? Oh for, man, you know? this is like my dream, Rob. This is like, you're asking me to like paint a picture here. Paint. I would, so I would ask you, what your goals are and then i would ask you what your either limitations are if you have any injuries or anything like that then i would ask you whether you have any equipment and if you don't that's totally fine i have been coaching dozens of people who have absolutely nothing at home and i've given them a different workout every single day for the past month um, so, I mean, I can't list all the exercises here, but the amount of body weight exercises that we can prescribe is endless. Yeah. And a body weight exercise is just for, for viewers is something that doesn't use actual barbells or weights or, you or got no it. device. Yeah. It's your body and your weight. Yeah. So you might, you, you might think of, you know, if I said name some body weight exercise, you might think old school gym class, you know, sit ups and push ups and, and squats and those kinds of things. But that's just the start of it. And, um, you know, I have a background in uh, gymnastics. Uh, and so, you know, that's something else that we can include is some flexibility training to help prevent injuries. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. And so we've we've been giving everything from running programs to gymnastics, <laughs> you know, not like tumbling and doing flips. Although if you're into that, that's cool too. I have a client who's doing handstands right now. She's doing amazing. Um, but if that's not your bag, if you're kind of just starting out, there's so many things that we can do to help, um, you know, make your core stronger. And then the other thing that we've been doing is we've actually been using household items. So a backpack, a duffel bag, Filled oh, with you books. put stuff in there. Oh, yeah. like weighted squats or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it works okay. really, really well. Yeah. Or like a two, four of cans in a backpack. You could do That's that really too. <laughs> yeah. So you, you talked a lot about uh, you, or you touched on the fact that you played gymnastics as a kid. I just want to share with our viewers a little bit about us, me growing up with you and my brother, Charlie. Uh, so we had, um, you were the oldest, obviously, and I was the baby. And Charlie and I played a ton of sports and you actually 
didn't play that many sports. And it's funny, you went in university, you did math, you did logic, you did philosophy, you know, you were so far, I think, from owning a, a gym, a fitness center and, and becoming a trainer. So, you know, I always thought I'd be the the superstar athlete and the, but look at me now I'm out of shape. And, and here you are the one that was, you know, in theory, not, not the greatest at sports. And now you're, you're incredibly coordinated and showing everyone how to do things. So what happened and how did things change? And like, did you ever see yourself here? Like oh, when you were 15 or so 20? Interesting. Or... That's such a good question. I mean, if I look at the, like the path that that uh got me here i think crossfit played a huge part in it so so my business now is, is called north star fitness because we don't just do crossfit but crossfit played a huge role in that and that is because it's a very kind of inclusive um way of uh working out and i think you know where we grew up, it was a small town. And, you know, the, the idea of athleticism where we grew up was mostly team sports. Would you say that? Oh, mostly. that's all we did. Yeah. We played in the winter, then we played baseball, and then we'd sneak in badminton and, and curling and, and, you know, you name it, any team, any team sport we could. And that's it. It was all the same guys that played the same sports. Yeah. So I think that I would have played sports more as a kid um, if I had more uh, like individual sports available to me. Like I think I would have really been into martial arts and gymnastics more if I would have done it longer. Um, but I think the reason CrossFit made it fun is because CrossFit is kind of, it's cross training, right? It's a mix of all kinds of different training. And so it attracts a lot of people because you're likely to like at least one of the 30 or 40 different things that we do in CrossFit. And so part of why I liked it is because, you know, I was good at the body weight stuff, the gymnastics stuff. And it was the first time in a gym I got to do that. Yeah. Well, I remember, I remember going to like provincials and stuff and you were doing gymnastics. And I think like you won some medals at the provincials and stuff, if I recall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess it kind of did make sense. It kind of was a, a natural flow from that. But, but there's something, so the reason though, that I think I ended up in this as a career, because no, you're right. I never, ever would have thought that this would have been my career. I thought that I would have been, you know, like a math professor probably or something or a philosophy professor. It seems so odd to say that now, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. I, I work out 100% for mental health. It makes me happy. And uh, I do it out of need. When I was in my teens and 20s, I suffered a lot from depression and, um, you know, anxiety. And I was diagnosed as bipolar. And this uh, was a really, really rough time in my life. And this seems, you know, interesting to say now. But I would say that out of every single thing that I tried to alleviate depression and make myself feel better, the thing that had the most uh, impact was physical exercise. And so when I set out to open my business, it was purely to make more people happy, to bring more happiness into people's lives. So that's Good what I'm you. doing today. <laughs> Good for you. Thanks for sharing. Um, you, uh, There's a question here, a couple comments, but there's a question here from uh, one of our viewers about uh, recommendations for meditation or mindfulness apps. Ah, okay. So a lot of it depends on uh, your personality uh, and the, whether you're a beginner at it or not. So my favorite recommendations for um, people who are just starting out with a meditation practice would be something like either the Calm app or the Headspace app. Uh, another one that I haven't tried, but I hear really good things is the 10% Happier app. Um, so those are really good ones if you're just getting into the habit of it. And I do recommend if you're just getting into the habit of meditation that you try a guided meditation. It's a lot easier than just saying, I'm going to sit here and you start, your brain starts to kind of. So these apps, the guided meditation apps, like they'll talk to you and they'll, you know, tell, talk to you through your breathing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then another one that I really, really enjoy because it's set up as a course and it's set up as a progression where it kind of teaches you. And if you are more interested in the science of it, the science of consciousness, the science of mindfulness, uh, I I personally use um, Sam Harris's app, uh, Waking Up, and I really, really enjoy that one. It is a little bit more cerebral and philosophical, I will warn you. <laughs> okay, what's it called? Waking Up? Waking Up, Sam Harris. 
Uh, so, and the other the other two that I mentioned for that are good for starting out are Calm, Headspace, and 10% Happier. I've downloaded Calm. I've yet to use it, but it is downloaded on my phone. I will use that at some point. Hey, back with respect to uh, nutrition. So do you, do you find it's – I find it's tougher in this time to be to – be, because you, you we're out of time, right? I, like some people have way more time. Some people have way less time. I know for us in our household, I have way less time. Um, do you do you find that your clients are telling you it's tougher right now to maintain kind of healthy nutrition? Yeah. So the main things that we're hearing a lot are um, I'm at home and therefore I have trouble structuring my day in such a way that I'm not eating all day. So that's a really big one. People eating at their desks. And so for that, we start recommending kind of adding a little bit of structure, having a routine where you're scheduling your meals and your snacks. And that's also really good for mental health because then it gives you a break from your actual workspace. And it's very, very helpful to have, um, to com compartmentalize work versus eating versus all of those things to give your mind a break from one thing or the other, right? So that you're just really doing one thing and not multitasking. Um, now, the other thing that I'm hearing a lot is uh, the quarantine 15. So, yeah. people, <laughs> so people are gaining that 15 pounds. And I think that's mostly where that's coming from is the mindless snacking. So that's the first one. And then also people are um, stress eating. But also the other thing that I'm hearing is stress baking. So that's a and new one for me. I had not heard of this before, but people are stress baking. Yes. Yeah, I, I did see. I did see a report on, on, I think it was Kraft, one of a publicly traded company, that their, their sales were up because of the sheer number of baking products that they had sold. And I guess you see it on Twitter and, and whatever, right? Instagram and stuff. How about stress drinking? I would imagine that's happening yeah, too. That is definitely another one for sure. So this is all part of how we manage stress. And in general, with nutrition, I find that it's not that people don't know what to eat or that they don't know, you know, whether they're eating too much or not. It's, it's navigating the emotional components of food, right? Navigating this idea of comfort eating or this idea of eating for boredom or uh, eating as a reward, let's say for working hard or getting through the day, right? So this is a really, really common thing. And so what we try to work on is habit, habit changing right? So every habit is built on a trigger. Something happens, and then you react to that thing. So if you can create just a little bit of space between that thing happening and your reaction to it, so something stressful happened, I saw something I didn't like on social media, and I'm going to go to the cupboard and get some chocolate chip cookies. How can I create a little bit of distance between those two things happening and maybe have a glass of water in between or maybe think about why that thing stressed me out before I actually have the cookie. So these are the things that we're working on with our clients. Nice. Um, speaking of clients that are kind of busy and have limited time, I imagine you have limited time to think. This has become kind of something that I definitely see in my own clients is, you know, we're, we're doing a ton of communication right now this is really our time to shine for us because you know markets are in a frenzy and people need that stability people need to know i imagine it's the same thing for you right like people can't think about what they need to do in the morning so that's why they choose to work with you or in the evening or when they should work out or what they should be eating and you just tell them exactly what to do so that they can kind of focus on the other stuff that's is that exactly right exactly it and so it's, it's interesting. I, I almost feel as though this pandemic is just shining a spotlight on the importance of what we've always kind of been uh, presenting or what we've always been doing for our clients, which is providing structure, providing accountability, and providing um, stress relief in the form of, hey, look, I have a plan for you so that you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. So we know that decision fatigue is a real thing. We know that the more you have to think about, the more options you have, the harder it is to make good decisions, especially at the end of the day after you've already made 100 decisions, right? So if you can get an expert to make those decisions for you, then you can save your energy for actually getting it done. That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah, it's it's why I love it so much is that I don't have to think. I just, you know, I check out 
check out the the video or the email or whatever. And I just, I know I just have to do that. And then I can go on with my day and I feel good about myself. Um, That's I exactly what our clients are telling us. Uh, this is what we hear over and over again. And it's so interesting because you think, oh, people are going to say, oh, you know, I love this exercise or I love this workout or whatever. But no, what people are saying is, I love that I don't have to think about it. It's what my clients say about us too, right? It's like, I love that you're just taking care of it. You're, I don't have to think about it. You're there. There's a plan in place. You remind me about it. And I just, I don't have to think about it. It's, it's a decision because people are busy dealing with their own lives and dealing with mm -hmm. their own kids and dealing with their own, whatever's going on in their lives, which is incredibly busy right now. Hundred um, percent. How about staying active? Uh, what do you recommend for people to like, so obviously you, you, you recommend, how about like, any other ideas for staying active, like tricks or tips that you've thought of that, that you think might be useful? So a few tips that I can give you is, uh, other than having a structure and a routine, which I think is even more important, it's absolutely critical right now, uh, even if you're not the kind of person who strives on a routine, um, it doesn't really matter the type of exercise that you do. But if you tell yourself that in the morning after I do my homeschooling with the kids, I'm gonna go for a walk with them. Well, that's physical activity. Um, so routine or structure is the first thing. Um, secondly, um, you, can, you can go a few different options, a few different routes in terms of workouts. So, I mean, for us, we're mostly working with clients who have some experience working out in the gym. And so what we're trying to do with them is to create some semblance of a routine that they recognize and something similar, something that they're used to. Um, but that's not necessarily the case for you know the public at large and so advice that i would have for someone who you know might not have experience in the gym might be completely different and what i would say is be kind to yourself and know that walking the dog counts that's exercise playing um you know well i guess we can't really play sports together but if you wanted to go you know bounce a basketball and and shoot some hoops in your um in your driveway that counts as exercise. So these are all things that we can do. Doing a yoga video, a YouTube yoga video, that counts as exercise. Um, and where I would uh, caution people is to pick something that has a little bit of structure as opposed to just kind of, oh, today I'm gonna do this, today I'm gonna do this, today I'm gonna do this. Cause it's really hard to build a habit if you're just kind of cherry picking um, and it's hard to see results. So my advice to people is the same as it has always been figure out your why and a goal and figure out once you figure that out make a plan and if you don't know how to make a plan get someone to help you make a plan so maybe you want to start running right then get someone to help you make a plan to run and then you you could be accountable to that person as well right that's right that's exactly it and so i, I feel like this is a little bit where our businesses are very similar it's accountability, it's coaching. And it's also this idea of, well, look, you know, if I go to see you for financial advice, I know that you have the knowledge, you've done all the research and all of that. And so why would I waste my time doing that? And it's the same thing um, when people are like scouring the internet and trying to find their next workout let a pro do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't do my own oil changes. So I definitely don't build my own workouts. Cause That's you know right. what happens well, what, on top of that, you can get hurt in both our industries, right? Mm -hmm. You can get hurt. Like imagine if you were trading today on your own in the oil market and you know, you didn't have a, an investment professional or an investment expert helping you out. You might've got wiped out today. You like some people definitely day traders or whatever got completely wiped out in the stock market today by trading oil futures. And you know, that doesn't happen if you're dealing with a professional, right? Whereby same, if I'm, if I want to, I, I hurt myself is the expression I wanted to use. I, I, I try to do, I don't know, lunges or something and I don't do them right. And I tear my MCL cause that, you know, I should have known not to do that exercise after another or vice versa. You just avoid to hurt yourself. Right. That's it. So, um, and, and right now, you know, I, we could get into, you know, I feel as though there's a lot of things um, we're seeing kind of some misconceptions come out and some pretty common, um, you know, mistakes uh, in a lot of the kind of free at home workouts that are just coming out right now. So there's a lot of those that are being kind of just floating around the Internet for free. Um, 
And so you avoid that problem, right? If you can find someone who has experience in the fitness industry and not only experience in the fitness industry, but experience with programming at home workouts. Um, so I guess I could ask you the same question is, what would you say the most common mistakes are that you really want to avoid with your portfolio and your finances right now? Yeah, I think right now is a time where if you're trying to do this on your own and if you're if, if you don't really have a good investment advisor in place, you you could have got hammered because you know what happens with the retail investors. So people like you, Tanya, and people like the viewers out there is that they're always historically wrong. And you know why? It's because fear and greed move the market. So fear is the emotion that puts makes you sell loss aversion when you go if you're managing your own account and you go and you click sell all when you think the world is collapsing you know in march or whatever it was well that's that's a pretty big colossal mistake that you made because you missed the last 25 percent run up here in the market and vice versa are if, we seeing that happen a lot oh well that's what happens that, right yeah yeah it's called capitulation so what happens on the way down in a stock on the stock market tenya is if you have more sellers than buyers the stocks go down, right? Mm -hmm. And there comes a point where you see the news, six o'clock news, you watch that tonight. Oh my God, I'm down. Check the next day, call your advisor, sell. More selling, begets more selling, begets more selling. And eventually there, you get to the point where there's no one left to sell, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone who wanted to be out, everyone who should not have been in the market, everyone who wasn't invested in a properly diversified portfolio or anyone who wasn't able to handle it emotionally, is now selling and they are out. So once the, those people are out of the market, there are no more sellers. So then you have just the buyers, the smart money, guys like me and, and other portfolio managers who are coming in, cherry picking, buying individual securities, shoring up portfolios with quality assets. And who made money on that? Well, the people who lost a ton of money are the people who, you know, tried to do it themselves and sell because they 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 let their fear take over, right? So I'd say that's the big one. Um, the other big one is saying that this time it's different, mm -hmm. right? That's a big mistake to avoid. If, if, you know, history repeats itself, we know this as, you know, I've studied this my whole life. I've studied behavioral finance when I was doing my MBA. And like as, as much as we think it's different, it's always different, right? In 2001, uh, you know, they drove a plane in the World Trade Center. In 2008, you know, banks were going bankrupt. In, in 1987, um, you know, there was a, an extreme credit algorithm and credit crisis in the 70s it was oil anyways world wars the great depressions it's always different but it's the behavioral pattern from individuals during extreme market uh, crashes or extreme market volatility is unfortunately always the same and we've seen it we've studied it and we're ready to deploy and, and to act on that and i think that's the the key difference in working with a with a pro is that you know i never want to be the guy who's ever going to tell my clients just don't worry about this, you know, sit still. We got this. We got this. We want to be letting our clients know what we're doing in their portfolios. So that way, you know, you talked earlier about communication. So I think that I think the biggest mistake is is trying to act in a time of extreme volatility when you don't really know what you're doing. Right. That's uh, and you're kind of becoming in like you're, I guess, in a reactionary state as opposed to using yeah, the data right yeah and you're not healthy in that state right like mm -hmm. you're not making healthy decisions you're not making smart decisions because and you know how we know is i'm kind of lucky in a way that i have you know hundreds of people who can call me and ask me for my advice and they do but the thing is they only do so all at the same time right <laughs> in times like this <laughs> in times like this it's like a pack right it's like a herd and the herd acts in the same way so when my phone starts ringing and people want to sell all their assets and they want to sell all their stocks. That's when I know I have that barometer. I know we're getting kind of close to the bottom. And the reverse of that is also true. When my phone's ringing off the hook and they're saying that your neighbor or their cousin made a ton of money in Bitcoin or made a ton of money in cannabis or made a ton of money in, you know, insert, insert uh, panic euphoria here, you know, the, the tulip, tulip bubble in, the, in Holland in the 1300s, um, that's when we know that we need to be trimming our stock positions because the, the reverse is the same, right? Like when, when you get too many buyers, when everyone hears about how much money other people are making, it kind of props up the market with more buyers. So we have to be careful in both those situations. So it's incredibly important to be, we are so disciplined, Tanya, like there is no one 
on this planet that is as disciplined as my father and I and our team is when it comes to investments and investment strategy. We're methodical, probably to a fault. We probably spend way, way, way too much time on this than we should, but we're both passionate about it and we both love it. So I mean, it's so interesting because I'm hearing you talk and I could just like change one or two words and it would describe exactly how I feel about exercise program design when you when I hear you talking about portfolio management it's I exactly... thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say you sound like your dad <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> change a word or two and you could sound exactly like our father that true uh, that that is true as well but uh yeah like I am very very uh passionate about um maintaining our clients health I think one of the big mistakes that um whether it's clients or it could also be trainers right now is the ones that don't have a lot of experience designing programs that are based on um, their client's health rather than, for example, just aesthetics, um, or they're not used to designing programs with limited equipment. And so we're seeing so many, um, you know, we're seeing things that are less than optimal. Um, and uh, for me, because I've been doing it for so long, um, you know, we, we've been working for years and years and years on this idea of, you know, what kind of workouts should people do when they are anxious? What kind of workouts should people do when they feel depressed? What kind of workouts should people do when they are really busy? What kind of workout should people do when they have kids versus not kids? Like, these are the things that I think about all the time. It sounds super boring and geeky no but i know that's i know you so i know that's all you do i know because when i go to marchand with you and my mom and my dad and my brother and whoever's there i know because all you two talk about is crossfit and all <laughs> is working out and all my dad and i talk about is investments so <laughs> I, I know this is exactly how passionate you are about this and it, it both makes us nerds i guess <laughs> but but it's it's actually i feel like it's um there's a spotlight on it right now because i'm seeing the same kinds of things that you're talking about in the financial market. So I'm seeing people act out of desperation, I'm seeing people out of desperation doing what I would consider to be workouts that are not optimal for health because they don't know what else to do. So, you know, oh, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just going to do like 200 burpees. Well, is that really good for someone who's under a lot of stress or who has a back problem? Probably not, but there's no one there to tell them that. So it's uh, kind of like when I want to impress my friends and I want to show them how I can walk on my hands. <laughs> I can walk on my hands for the viewers out there, but then I end up hurting in the lower back and the wrists and, and uh, it's not like it used to be. And I should probably be doing other workouts and building up towards walking on my hands. Right? <laughs> so, okay. So let me go back then to investments because for someone, let's say like me who prefers to leave it to the pros do you recommend any change in either strategy or mindset? Like, do you recommend, you know, reaching out to whoever is taking care of this for you? Or do you recommend just not thinking about it at all and not even looking at your statements? Like what there mindset are, should we, should we be in right now? Yeah, there are, like I'd say a pie, there's like a pie of clients and we know because we know how often our clients go online and check their statements. There's, you know, 20%, that check every day religiously and, and are, are extremely on top of their portfolios, their assets. And then there's another 40, 50% that never check and they get their statements and maybe they don't even look at their statements. I would say if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable not checking and you know that there's extreme market volatility and you trust your advisor, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, reading the emails that are being sent or whatever. And, not panicking and not calling your advisor and not making dramatic changes. If there are changes to be made, you know, one of the things that I've emailed my clients is, you know, in, in mid to late March, I emailed everyone and I said, guys and gals, there are unbelievable opportunities right now. If you have cash sitting at home, now is the time to be putting that money into the market. And sure enough, you know, the market rallied 25% since then. So that would have been one where you would have read that and you would have been like, yeah, maybe I don't have anything to do. And maybe I stick my head in the ground like an ostrich. But if there is an action to be taken, Maybe you would have had some cash and you would have put it to work and that's good enough. That's an action, right? You reacted. And then I would, I would also say stuff like, Hey guys, you know, if, you know, if you typically make your RSP contributions at the end of the year or, you know, 
maybe now's the time to be thinking of uh, dollar cost averaging and making purchases throughout the year. Kind of, you know, kind of friendly tips that I would suggest to my clients in time like this. And if they apply, great. And if they don't, no big deal. Keep, you know, the last thing you need is another stress on your on your mind right now. And if you know yourself, Tanya, and you know that your your little brother's taking care of your investments and they're in fantastic hands and you're not stressed out about it. I would concur that that's not a bad thing to not look at your statements. In fact, a lot of people would benefit from not looking at their statements because here's the thing. When we build portfolios, we don't build portfolios for a day or for a week or for a month, right? When I built your portfolio, I built it for you and Steve and Marius's plan for the rest of your life. Like it's, it's supposed to be, you know, a long-term vision for what we want to do with you and your wealth. It, it's not what's going to happen today or tomorrow. And my dad always says, I can't go one show, by the way, Tanya, without quoting my dad ever, apparently. <laughs> uh, my dad always says, this is like, the short term is noise. The extreme you need a, short term my dad is always says Twitter account. I know. I, 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 it's so bad. I quote him all the time now, Tanya. And like, and I, I can't even go a global episode or a BNN episode. I could do a full video clip of just me saying, like my dad says, or my dad always says. But anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, that's okay. He always says that short term is noise. Short term movements in the market is day to day. Like today, I look at my screen here, and the Dow fell 600 points. So we've now had four consecutive positive weeks in Canada. Before that, we had had four negative weeks. So we had four weeks straight down, which was the quickest correction, you know, in, in the history of investments. And then we had four weeks kind of got not quite half of that back. Let's say half of that back roughly. So, you know, it's moving incredibly fast, but that is short term. That is noise. Now, if, if we have cash or if there's opportunities to rebalance, we do that actively, but you, you don't have to worry about that, right? Or our clients. So to answer your question is whether or not you're fine to just put your head in the sand. If you have a good advisor, you absolutely are. And a lot of people would benefit from looking less at their portfolios provided they trust their guy, right? Their guy or their gal. Yeah. I think, so, you know. I think what you're saying really makes sense to me. I feel like it's similar in our business. Like I have some clients where I just tell them like, throw away your scale. Like don't even look at it because it's not going to help you right now. The scale is like the portfolio. It is. It is. It is. We're like look at the portfolio statements. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, and it depends on the person and the personality type and and all of that, like whether that's a stressful thing for them. And I'm a huge proponent that, hey, if, if the scale stresses you out, then don't look, go by how you feel. And then, and if you have a good coach, then they can give you some other metrics to track um, so that you can get yourself some wins. Just like we talked get about. Some get some we wins. We talked about this <laughs> earlier too. The, the, there, I, there has to be a correlation between um, I, I, we talk about mental health and physical health, but just, you know, talk about that. Have you seen, I know in myself, when I work out and, and you know, when I'm doing physical activity or I'm playing sports or I'm playing hockey, I'm just, I'm just way more productive. Right. So mm -hmm. way more productive for me means, you know, being able to be better in my work. And, you know, yeah. usually there's a direct correlation to that at the back end. You've, have you seen, you mentioned to me earlier today that you had seen some sort of correlation yeah. there. So I recently wrote an article on this for the community newspaper, and it was actually an article on all the unexpected ways that being fitter um, helps you financially. Um, and that is, it's super interesting because it might not be things that you think of. For example, people who are fitter are, uh, and this, these are just statistics, and I don't have the actual statistics on me, but essentially, I'm not going to call you on them. They've done studies, and for example, people who are fitter are more likely to get a raise, and they're more likely to ask for a raise. People who are fitter are more likely to be investors. People who are fitter are, they just overall make more. They're more productive. They work not necessarily longer hours, but they uh, get more work done in the hours that they work. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just see it in my clients all the time. Um, you know, there's, there's always this idea that like, you know, you're trying to be productive and you're trying to get work done and you don't want to take a break because you don't want to lose your momentum. But I've seen it in myself and I'm sure you've seen it that the days that you work out, you are just so much more productive. And that's one of the things that I sometimes will even track with our clients is track their actual productivity in order to get a buy-in for the workout, because that's a huge part of being a coach is getting that buy-in. And so if I can tell you, hey, you're gonna make more money and <laughs> you're gonna get a raise and you know, you're know you gonna be more successful, then that's a great way to create some buy-in. How's that for uh, for motivation, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, um, 
I, I wanted to ask you the, the the future. What do you see for uh, North Star Fitness, or you know, what 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 do you see in the cards, and uh, what where can people find you and all that? Well, um, right now um, we have, of course, transitioned all our business to online. But if anyone visits our website, northstar.fit, um, you're going to see there uh, a section where you can apply uh, for our remote coaching program. And you're going to see that we have a full intake form where it asks you, you know, what your goals are and all of that. And I think, you know, I, I don't, I foresee that as soon as um, the, the shutdown is over, that we'll be able to reopen our facility and that, you know, things will eventually get back to normal. But I think what will come out of this whole thing is um, um, for us, uh, the ability to kind of hone in on our vision to really, really be able to help people get better and be happier and provide more customized, personalized service. Um, because we've we've found that we kind of shine in this uh, in this situation, and so I think we can take that into the future. I think we're going to see yeah, this that a is, lot. This is definitely a time to be shining, if ever there was one, and that's the attitude I take every single day when I wake up. It's like this this is what we've been this is what I've been training my whole life for. This is oh. the time that my clients need me the most, and it's uh, for me it, it's exhilarating. It's it, I, I love it. I love the the pressure. I love the for me, I love it. It sounds like you're thriving in it too. Well, and I think, you know, I think not everyone is going to have such an easy time. I think this, uh, I think the fitness business is going to get hit really, really hard by this crisis. I'm seeing, um, you know, some of our colleagues, um, you know, having having to kind of ask for charity and, and things like that. And, and it's going to be tough times. And I think that things will change. I think you're going to see kind of a separation in the market for fitness. I think you're going to see um, kind of the middle disappear. So you're going to see kind of all of the people who are giving a more personalized, customized service are going to come out of this um, stronger than ever. Uh, and I think that the big box gyms also will come out of it stronger. Uh, I feel like the middle guys are going to struggle a little bit in this in this situation. Um, and so, yeah, we're kind of uh, trying to position ourselves in a good place through all of this by giving a more uh, personalized service. Good for you. Hey, I just read a headline here, Tanya. Uh, coronavirus antibody testing in LA County. They did. They actually tested a large sample size. 55 times more cases than are reported. Yeah, I have to say that doesn't surprise me, but that's actually really good news. If well, yeah, there's a lot of antibodies. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of antibodies. And if they were able to test that many people, that's great. I mean, if we can standardize this testing and we can start getting people going back and businesses reopening once we've confirmed that they have the antibodies, um, that's a great scenario. And actually hearing that it was 55% more than they thought probably 55 means, times or 55 times. Okay. So maybe that's actually a good thing because these people maybe never even knew that they had it and they got well, through it. And yeah, I imagine some of us here in Manitoba for sure have gone through it. And, you know, we, some of us had no symptoms or, or were just, you know, stubborn and didn't go anywhere. Yeah. 4.1%. This is a CNBC article, by the way, that I'm quoting 4.1% of the county's adult population uh, apparently has the antibodies. So they they only have 8,000 confirmed cases, but they estimate that it's be between two and three, two and 400,000 people that have it. So um, yeah, that is probably this, good. Yeah. And I wonder if this is going to change the statistics on the actual death rates. Um, if they start including people with antibodies in the in the statistics, uh, I don't know how they report the statistics. So that's interesting. Well, I think it's con I think it's deaths divided by confirmed cases. I okay. believe that's how they. But I, I you know what? I don't even know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> pretend to be an expert on on uh, on pandemics. Yeah, and that's uh, that's another piece here where 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 I think uh, people are. You know, they might think, oh, well, you know, I just need to stay healthy and not get this virus, um, but they might not know how to do that. So that's one other advantage of having a fitness routine with someone who knows what they're doing is creating workouts that will actually increase your immunity as opposed to decrease your immunity. Because if you're stressed out, that will decrease your immunity, right? So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You always get sick when you're stressed out, right? Mm hmm. And you so, always get a so this is you kind of, a jacket. yeah, and this is the fine line that we are walking as trainers is, is making sure that we are providing workouts that are just hard enough to stress our clients just enough for them to improve, but not so much 
that it will um, increase their day-to-day stress so that their immunity will still stay strong. So, Do you think long-term, Tanya, there's going to be some significant differences in how we operate as a society because of this? And which ones do you see changing? I'm going to put your philosophy degree to work here. That is a really good question. I think so. Um, I think that if there was anyone alive today who had really been around during the Spanish flu, um, I think this whole thing would have gone down completely differently. And I think because this happened in a day and age where now the records are being kept very well, we have uh, records of everything, there's communication happening. I think the combination of this pandemic happening at the same time as us being in a technologically advanced time where the world is very, very connected, that combination is going to change how we just, how we see uh, epidemiology in general, disease in general, um, social gatherings in general. Um, I'm seeing it very, very slow here. You know, I'm finding that the people I'm talking to who are in Toronto or in Europe, I, you know, know gym owners in Italy and I know gym owners in the US and everyone that I talk to is in a completely different mindset. Uh, And I don't think that anyone's going to forget it. You know, if, if we didn't have the technology, you maybe might ask someone in 20 years and they will have forgotten. But now that we have a record and everyone's Instagram feed is going to have this on there. So (laughs) no one's going to forget. I don't. And my my YouTube channel will have a nice running diary of it. too. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of my YouTube channel, please take a second to subscribe, uh, go to it, like my Facebook page next week. Tanya, I'm pretty thrilled. I, Got to finalize this yet, but I'm working on a PD. I'm working on an infectious disease specialist, an American infectious disease specialist from Alabama. She's one of the top infectious disease specialists. So she will be hopefully on on Monday. And if you want to learn, I'm going to definitely going to ask her those types of questions. And I'm going to ask her about death rates. I'm going to ask her. And if you care to know more about the virus, epidemiology, treatment, all that, uh, make sure to tune in next week. Thursday, we're on here live uh, with my father, Claude Tetro. So I'll be able to quote him in the flesh. It won't be in the flesh because he'll be, you know, remote. Uh, he's in Marchand these days. So I'll be able to, uh, to work with him. Um, Tanya, I want to thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to all the viewers for uh, joining us. Thanks for questions. Thanks for popping in. Uh, anything else you want to add Tanya? No, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Rob. Yes. We'll do this again sometime. Merci beaucoup, Tanya. You're the best. Tosi. You're the best. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you Thursday.